people in the apartment really trying to kill Tchaikovsky, or is it only in his mind? The answer definitely isn't black and white. The Tenant is a multi-layered and at times confounding film by Roman Polanski. To arrive at an understanding of its themes, as well as to give context, we should take a brief look at the two other films in his brilliant apartment trilogy, Propulsion and Rosemary's Baby. Obviously, all three films take place within apartments, enclosed spaces that often become claustrophobic. Although in theory, an apartment is a private space, the spaces in these films are anything but, and the films work so well writing on the precarious relationship between the individual and the other, be it members of the opposite sex, a religious group, or a sociocultural one. The apartment becomes the physical and metaphorical barrier between ourselves and others. Unfortunately, it often proves ineffectual. Polanski is great at using the motif of the peephole to undermine our sense of privacy, and in The Tenant, this effect is achieved through the viewfinder on a pair of binoculars. In Repulsion, the apartment is the physical manifestation of Carol's troubled mind, which festers and gradually starts to break apart at the seams, cracking under pressure. She's locked in a space with nothing to do but confront herself and confront her past, which is subtly hinted at through this family portrait. It is suggested that Carol suffered through sexual abuse as a child at the hands of a male member of her family, which explains her attitudes towards men. I think she has poor personal boundaries, which is common among the abused, and this is shown beautifully through the porous and multiple nature of her apartment walls. So she overcompensates by closing herself off to others, because if they get too close, she'll be at risk of losing her identity. So when people start to barge into her apartment, or get close to her, it literally feels like this, and she has no choice but to kill them. In Rosemary's Baby, Rosemary's apartment is kind of like her womb. It starts off dark and empty, and gradually, room for a baby is made. Interestingly, like the tenant, there is only a vacancy for a new soul to enter, or to be born, after someone else has already died, from falling. So what should obviously be a private affair between the couple turn into a creepy religious ritual wherein everyone, including Satan, is in her bedroom, or a womb. It's a rape of the worst kind. So how do you get inside someone's womb? Well, Minnie seems to do it by constantly barging into her apartment and getting inside her body through the form of chocolate mousse and other insidious concoctions. In The Tenant, of course, the storekeeper seems to force Simone's daily hot chocolate onto Tchaikovsky. Cup of chocolate, let's get Tchaikovsky. Why not? It's a seemingly benign event that becomes more unsettling and sinister as the film goes on. If the cult of Rosemary's baby plants the seeds of evil in one night, the process at work in the tenant is much more gradual. A slow wearing down of Tchaikovsky's psyche, knock by knock, complaint by complaint. I think the title is important. The definition of a tenant is a temporary inhabitant of a place. He's not the owner, he's just occupying a space for some time. Indeed, he has to wait for Simone to die in order to take her place. The patient died at 4.20 p.m. yesterday. And he ends up taking all her places, from her falling trajectory to her place inside the cast. Meanwhile, it can be said that Simone's soul is taking up residence in Tchaikovsky's mind. This made possible through Egyptology voodoo and the tooth that was left behind, that failed to be buried or incinerated. Or perhaps what possesses Tchaikovsky is not Simone's spirit, but his own guilt. Up to you. Anyway, despite his best efforts, Tchaikovsky ends up turning into Simone and following her fate. Throughout the whole apartment renting ordeal, Tchaikovsky has to constantly lie about his own identity, that perhaps there comes a point when he himself forgets who he is. Of course, he's also surrounded by Simone's stuff. And there comes a moment in the middle of the film, a turning point, in which Tchaikovsky inexplicably gets robbed. He loses a lot of his possessions, but Simone's are somehow still there, like her dress and nail polish. It's really symbolic of Tchaikovsky losing his own identity. It doesn't help at all that the oppressive neighbors demand absolute silence whenever he's trying to express himself. In fact, silence is a very important theme in this film. 
There's a scene in which Madame Diaz tries to get Tchaikovsky to sign a petition to evict a tenant. He refuses, and she basically threatens him. I shall make a note of your attitude. I can see what we're dealing with here. Everyone for himself, and never mind anyone else. Hmm? Not at all. Oh, I know your type exactly like that man opposite. Right up until the day he was struck down with paralysis. Then his neighbors let him stew in his own juice. Right after this ordeal, he says, <sighs> What do you need to do? Drop dead? Basically, voice is life. And denying someone their voice for the sake of unanimity is akin to killing them, snuffing them out. There's a scene in which Madame Diaz strangles Tchaikovsky, and people debate over whether it's really happening or if it's in Tchaikovsky's mind, but does it really matter? She might not physically have her hands around his neck, but she threatened to remove him from the apartment just for disagreeing with her. Homogeny is obviously valued, and Madame Gadarian even says that she's only being kicked out of the apartment because her daughter is disabled. She's done everything she could to make things difficult for us. Just because the girl is disabled. Perhaps then, Simone Schul was driven from the apartment on account of her being a lesbian. And Tchaikovsky faces a lot of discrimination for being of Polish descent, even though he's a French citizen. Once anyone gets involved with the police, they're always looked on with suspicion. Especially if they're not French. But I'm a French citizen. And it's no accident that Madame Kaderian is the only other tenant who speaks with a foreign accent. If we view the apartment as a microcosm of French society, the theme of xenophobia become apparent. Which is no surprise considering Polanski's personal history through the Holocaust. He also tends to live in one country for a few years before moving on to the next, making him a kind of permanent tenant. Even when Tchaikovsky goes to the police, they end up having the same sort of discriminatory attitude. Tchaikovsky's in a Russian name. Polish, Polish. So you're not French? I'm a French citizen. So, to return to my opening question, are the people really trying to drive Tchaikovsky to suicide? Well, they might not literally want him to jump, but the apartment, as a representation of society, requires you to conform or get out. And both choices result in a certain kind of death. Either we make noise and end up as outcasts, or shrink our existence down to the very narrow, acceptable tonal register. Thank you for watching. Okay, so that got a little depressing there, so if you liked it, check out my equally depressing analysis on Lars von Trier's Dogville, and maybe these two movies as well. And I would like to say a big thank you to all of you who are recommending movies to me. This is so great because like, usually I'm used to recommending movies to other people until they get really annoyed at me. So this is great and I'm actually watching them. I watched Barton Fink and Branded to Kill. So keep it coming and I'll see you next week.